Hi, my name is Dr. Don Wicker, and I want to talk to you today about a subject that's real important, business ethics. I'm really excited about this topic, and I can't wait for you to hear the brief information that we're going to share with you. Why differentiate between rules, policies, laws, and ethics? Well, let's take a look while I sit down and talk to you for a second here. The difference between an ordinary decision and an ethical one is the point where rules no longer serve. Think about the value and judgment, how they play a role in ethics. Employees need a buffer zone, expected ethical behavior. You think about that. Everyone needs to understand what's ethics and what isn't. Business ethics, whether a specific behavior is ethical or unethical, is often determined by stakeholders. And of course, when I say stakeholders, I'm talking about the investors, the employees, the consumers, interest groups, legal system, and of course, the community. Americans' distrust of business. You think about it, if you look at our slide, we have a diagram showing what the distrust is of Americans in business. And of course, if you think about some of the companies that have failed, the Enrons, the Tycos, the WorldComs, that was all due to um, unethical practices. And of course, you think about that, well, there, America has grown to distrust business. Ethical issues on the rise. Of course, there's an increased awareness of accounting fraud, insider trading, falsifying organizational documents, deceptive advertising, defective products, bribery, and employee theft. And you think about that deceptive advertising. Every time we see something on television, um, there's a price or um, a sale price that we see. But of course, when we go down to purchase that particular item, that price isn't there. Is that deceptive advertising? That's one of the ethical issues that has come up in the world in our economy today. In the 1970s, business ethics became an emerging field. Of course, business professors began to write about social responsibility, and businesses became more concerned with their public image and addressing some of these ethical issues. And you think about the issues such as I uh, discussed briefly before, bribery, deceptive advertising, price collusion, product safety, and environment. All these issues became very prominent during the 70s. In the 1990s, institutions of business ethics, what exactly happened? Well, you think about the federal sentencing guidelines for organizations set the tone for ethical compliance. That was the federal sentencing guidelines. They set the tone. That's one important fact to remember. These took preventive actions against misconduct. A company could avoid or minimize the potential penalties. That's what happened with the federal sentencing guidelines. Federal sentencing guidelines for organizations, of course, there was more involved when you think about the federal sentencing guidelines. The standards and procedures capable of detecting and preventing misconduct. It also looked at high-level oversight, care and delegation of authority, effective communication training, systems to monitor, audit, and report misconduct, which is real important, the reporting of all this misconduct and unethical practices, and the consistent enforcement. And of course, as in quality and any other subject, continuous improvement upon these laws. Ethics contributes to investor loyalty. When you think about a loyal company, an ethical company, well, you're going to have more investors being more loyal, and which is what companies want. They want that investment dollar to further their research and development of whatever products they're trying to make. So if you have an ethical company, the investors are going to be loyal. And you think about ethical climates in organizations, of course, providing platforms for efficiency, productivity, and profitability. Finally, ethics contributes to profits. We always think about profits when we think about ethics, and when we think about ethics, we think about profits. Because if you have an ethical company, it's probably going to be very profitable. And a corporate concern for ethical conduct is increasingly uh, being integrated with strategies and, and planning to maximize profitability. And you think about corporate citizenship is positive uh, associated with return on investment, sales growth. And many studies have found that positive relationship between citizenship and performance go hand in hand. That basically wraps up what we wanted to talk to you about as far as ethics and ethics responsibility. We want to thank you for tuning in to lecture series number one and look forward to talking to you again in lecture series number two.